So I just watched Joker 2. Joker 2, Omelé du Fromage. So originally I was gonna make this a spoiler-free video, but honestly this movie is such a piece of shit. I don't even care. So this is your warning, this is gonna be spoiler talk. If you don't like that, just click off the video, it's fine. If you have seen the movie, stick around. So I was asking myself, like, why make a sequel to such a great movie like 2019's Joker, regarded as like one of the best renditions of the Joker we've seen in film. But you gotta remember this is Hollywood and their goal is to make money. Joker made over a billion dollars, so of course they're gonna make a sequel to this movie. It's Hollywood again trying to capture lightning in a bottle. And honestly, this movie is a good reason why you shouldn't do that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So the basic plot of Joker 2 is Arthur Fleck standing trial for what he did in the first movie. Now I'll say, going into this, I knew it was gonna be a musical and Honestly, I had no problem with that. I had no issues with Lady Gaga portraying Harley Quinn, or I'm sorry, I should say Lee. I actually think she's a good actor and honestly an awesome singer. And with that being said, Jesus, did this movie take a huge shit. Hey, first of all, this movie, like I said, revolves around Arthur Fleck standing trial for what he did in the first movie. A great portion of this movie is in the courtroom revolving around this court case. And the problem with that, it's just retelling you what you already saw in the first movie. It's like, we get it, we saw it, can we move on please? Also like at some point he fires his lawyer and then I don't know how it happens, but he decides to represent himself and the judge allows him to come in in full Joker attire and face paint. And this is supposed to be like a real grounded movie in reality. And I don't think that would happen. Like I went on jury duty once and they wouldn't even let me wear shorts. Like, you're gonna let this dude walk in with full face paint? Okay. Now let's talk about the musical aspect of this movie. And I use musical in air quotes because, you know, usually a musical will use their music to portray what's happening or, like, progress the movie with song. And in this movie, the music doesn't add anything to the movie. Honestly, it, at points, takes me out of the movie and I zone out. And I would like to see somebody take this movie, edit all the musical parts out of it, and condense it to like an actual just like film, I feel like it would be slightly better than what we actually got, at least in my opinion. And I'm not gonna lie, the music at some points were just so annoying. It was actually funny to see like towards the end of the movie, Joker goes to talk to Harley Quinn and they're trying to have a conversation and Harley just breaks out into singing and Arthur is just so annoyed he actually pinches her mouth shut and be like, no, shut up, I just wanna talk. I don't wanna, t I wanna talk, stop singing, please. I Shut your fucking mouth. Shut, I shut, 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 shut your fucking mouth. And speaking of Harley Quinn, like when they first introduced her, I really thought they were gonna pull the same twist they did in the first movie, where Arthur illusioned his whole relationship with his neighbor. I thought Harley Quinn was gonna be like a figment of his imagination or something. And it looked like it was going that way because during the whole first part of the movie with her and interacting with Arthur, nobody else really interacted with Harley Quinn like at all. It's like she was a ghost essentially. But then when they try to like break out of prison, she also gets tackled by some guards. And you know, I guess that kind of proved like, okay, she is real. I did think it was kind of interesting how they kind of reversed the roles a little bit in this movie because we know in the past, the Joker is the one who usually corrupts Harley Quinn and makes her like what we know today as Harley Quinn. But in this one, it's actually Harley Quinn who's corrupting Arthur. She's like a very bad influence on Arthur and like he has these thoughts in his head and she's pushing him more towards the chaos side. Oh, oh yeah, they try to make Joker have like a split personality or something. Uh, I don't think it works at all. He's trying to pull a James McAvoy, but I'll get more into that in a second. The only like highlight of this movie and the only scene I keep replaying in my head because it was just so good is when Gary took the stand and he's talking to Arthur, who is being the Joker right now in the full face paint and everything. And it's such a good scene because when Arthur or when Joker was telling Gary like, hey, I didn't even hurt you. Like I told you I wouldn't hurt you. It's then Gary like pours his heart out to Arthur, be like, no, you were my friend, and I saw you kill somebody, and yes, you didn't hurt me physically, but mentally, you, like, fucked me up, and I have PTSD. And if we could have more scenes like that, this movie would be so much better. And there is a point where Arthur does come to terms with the fact that he's not Joker, or that he doesn't want to be Joker anymore. He makes a plea that's just, like, there is no Joker, there's just Arthur. And at that point, we see Harley Quinn get up in disappointment or something, and she walks out of the room disappointed with the fact that Joker isn't the master of chaos that he portrayed himself to be. And in reality, he's just a mentally ill person that needs help. 
And then out of nowhere, an explosion happens, blowing up the courthouse. And it's funny that Joker was so close to the wall that he get, he got the least damage. And then the camera pans over to Harvey Dent and it shows that's how he got his two faced. And I'm just like, fuck off. This is such bullshit. This also gives Arthur the chance to escape. During that, he actually gets picked up by two Joker fanboys. While they're driving, Arthur hears them talking about a plan to burn down the city. And at that point, Arthur's already come to the fact that, like, he doesn't want to be Joker anymore. He just wants to be Arthur. So he leaves running away from, like, essentially the Joker's henchmen. And even though he's running away, they're still saying, like, Joker, we still love you, man. And he ends up at the iconic staircase from the first movie. And at the top, there's Harley Quinn, who's just waiting for him or something. And he goes up to her and saying, like, hey, I, I, I escaped prison. Like, we can be together now, you know, and live happily ever after or something. And then Harley breaks it to Arthur, basically saying that she was in love with the Joker, not Arthur. So heartbroken, she leaves and he lets the cops pretty much take him back to jail. And then we cut to a hallway scene where he's being escorted by a cop. He gets then stopped by an inmate to tell him a joke. And I honestly, I already forgot what the joke was, but the punchline is you get what you fucking deserve and he shanks Joker. <sighs> Fuck this. We then see Arthur collapse to the floor, bleeding out. The background kind of blurs a little bit, but then we see like the inmate who stabbed him kind of carve a smile into his face, perhaps alluding to maybe that guy being the actual Joker. But that'd be fucking stupid. And it goes to black and credits come up and that was Joker 2. Honestly, a big disappointment. I wouldn't be surprised if people actually got up out of their seats and walked out of the theater. I, I probably would have done the same. As far as redeeming qualities of this movie, obviously I like Joaquin Phoenix portraying Joker. He did an amazing job in the first movie. Lady Gaga is an actual like actor. She's a pretty good actor and a phenomenal singer. So her singing parts, while they were distracting, yeah, they actually sounded very good. Both of them sounded very good. We know Joaquin Phoenix can sing. You know, he played Johnny Cash and walked the line. So yeah, the musical aspect, I didn't really mind. I just wish they would have utilized it more for like storytelling or just, you know, have it progress the movie in a way that ultimately amounted to something better. Not being shanked in a prison. Man, you know what? I'm sick of your shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just fucking fade to black. That was honest. Like, was that really the best ending they could have came up with? But I think many people like me are just going to just not take this movie as canon and just forget about it entirely. You know, the Joker, Arthur Fleck, imagine those, this whole second movie and none of it's real. He's still the Joker we saw in the first movie. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just say that. So, yeah, I can stand here and just keep nitpicking small things that I didn't like about this movie, but I'm not going to do that. So with that being said, I will say Joker 2 honestly it's probably like my lowest grade ever like a four out of ten it was very bad so i want to hear from you guys what are y'all's thoughts on joker 2 if you've already seen it what y'all think about it whatever it is let me know down in the comments below and i'll see y'all in the next video later